Let's get right to the outlook for the fiscal third. Weigh up the factors for us. Was this all about the recovery in DRAM, traditionally commoditized, or is this more about the ramp up in HBM 3E that is going in support of things like the H200 from NVIDIA? First of all, thank you, uh, Caroline and Ed, for having me on the show here. Um, our recovery is really driven by a demand related to AI with tight supply and actually demand that is strong across all, most of our end markets, particularly data center driven demand. And Micron has a strong portfolio of products, very excited about our latest offering of HBM 3E that you referred to earlier. We have just begun shipments of this and we see strong growth in the several quarters that are ahead of us. And uh, supply is tight. Uh, the leading edge uh, nodes in particular are in tight supply. That's leading to price increases as well. So as we look ahead at 2024, our year of recovery, we see increasing prices uh, driven by the demand supply fundamentals. And we look at 2025 to be a record year for Micron's revenue with, uh, with significantly improved profitability as well. 2025 supply also mostly already allocated. You sold out on 2024, Sanjay. Just let's dig in on the high bandwidth memory because, what was it, Jason Huang over at NVIDIA calling this a technology miracle. Will it not get commoditized? Will prices remain elevated? Uh, first of all, our, it's our HBM product that is sold out for calendar year 24 and a vast majority of the supply for our 2025 is allocated as well. This is a critical product. HBM 3E is in very, very early stages here. And it's key enabler of what AI platforms, generative AI platforms are able to do. Just think about it. I mean, uh, the latest Blackwell uh, platform that has been announced, it has 64 die of memory in it. So tremendous amount of silicon. A HBM is growing fast. Uh, expected to be about 15% high teens, mid to high teens of the industry revenue over the course of next several years, compared to being just half of that last year. And as you look ahead at the new platforms being announced, NVIDIA earlier this week, Broadcom yesterday, they're all uh, placing tremendous emphasis on the performance and the power of HBM memory. As AI becomes bigger, data becomes bigger. Data lives in the products that Micron makes. For AI applications, lives in the kind of products such as HPM 3E, but high density DIM modules, right. as well as other products that Micron makes, DDDR5 memory and data center SSDs. So AI is really driving tremendous growth trajectory. HBM 3E is absolutely going to be critical. This is in very early innings. And you know, even if there are any perturbations in supply, they will get absorbed over time. And what's important to understand is because HBM 3E product is extremely silicon intensive across the industry, it is really leaving not enough supply for non-HBM products, and those are in tight supply. And that's what is driving a tremendous uh, strength in terms of demand supply fundamentals and pricing trajectory for memory. And the question is, Sanjay, how do you keep up, right? HBM 3E running at 5.2 gigabits per second. You've already mentioned Blackwell. You're going to have to bring that next generation HBM 9 gigabits per second faster. Just walk us through the real-term ramp of your products, getting them into the real world, and when they show up in your financials in the, in the near and medium term. Well, we talked about yesterday in our earnings call that uh, we have begun shipments of HBM 3E product. It's an industry leading product. It has the best performance and the uh, lowest power in the industry, which you know for data center applications, power is critical. 30% uh, better power for our HBM 3E product. So we have really long legs in this HBM 3E product for foreseeable future here. And HBM 3E has begun shipments, and we mentioned in the call yesterday that it will be accretive to our gross margins, and we'll have several hundred million dollars of revenue of this HBM 3E product in our fiscal year, which will end in August timeframe. And of course, we look at significant growth ahead for HBM 3E as well. 
Our production has begun. We are extremely focused on continuing to ramp this product. Our target is to get our share in HBM3E equivalent to our DRAM industry share. And we're going to re remain extremely disciplined. Key will be absolutely managing the supply and demand fundamentals overall for the DRAM industry. So we look at strong growth ahead for our HBM3E. Keep in mind that HBM is expected to have a CAGR greater than 50% over the course of next uh, few years in terms of bit growth that HBM will be driving. Of course, it will be all the Gen AI applications that will be driving mm. this. And I just want to add here that, it, of course, data center is a big driver of our growth. We are shifting our business more toward data center given the demand and the profitability uh, uh, profile of that part of the market. We are doing that with our DRAM products yes. as well as with our SSDs. But just want to point out that other markets, such as smartphones and PCs, they too are implementing AI-enabled devices. And you'll start seeing them coming out from later this year. And of course, 2025 will be the first full year of all these devices on the edge such as smart AI enabled smartphones and PCs, they take much higher memory content than their prior generation devices. You're really so we are excited here. about the opportunities for uh, that AI yeah. enables for us, enables for memory, which is at the uh, heart of AI revolution yeah. in, in terms of from data center all the way to the edge. Going back though to this high bandwidth memory and going back to that market share that you say you want to own. Can you articulate exactly what that share is going to be for our audience right now when we have Hynix, Samsung likely to be unveiling their products at the first half of this year? Our uh, share in DRAM today in the industry is approximately 23%, and we are targeting that our HBM share would be in line with that uh, DRAM industry share. Of course, it will be ramping gradually over time. Sometime in 2025, we expect to be getting to right. our uh, share in HBM equivalent to DRAM share. It's a product that has greater profitability, and as we said, it will really will be a driver of our revenue and profit growth, along with the rest of the market that has strengthening fundamentals as well. For our Bloomberg Television and Radio and, and audience, let me just so point out the most important Mike, thing oh. is that our product has leadership specs, and that's why it's getting a strong customer pull. Leadership products, again, in terms of performance, bandwidth being about 10% better than other competitive products, right. power being 30% lower. Data centers right. today take up about 3% of the world's energy. Over the course of next several years, expected to continue to increase, getting to closer to high single digit percentage. That's where memory becomes extremely important in making sure that these uh, accelerators for Gen AI are running lower power, low power memory, our 30% lower power solution is extremely attractive to our customers. Sanjay, for our Bloomberg television and radio audience worldwide, you can point out a lot of things. We have a lot of questions for you, so bear with us. Let's go back to on-device, because you clearly want to talk about that. We talk about on-device a lot on this program, the smartphone and PC context. You are saying that there is a tangible benefit that you're seeing in orders for that. But is that happening right now? There is a lot of skepticism that on-device processing of LLMs and generative AI tools is some way away. Are you telling us that this is material now or you're predicting that it's coming soon? Well, earlier this year, you saw Samsung S24 getting announced at Mobile World Congress. Honor announced its uh, Magic 6 Pro. And these are great examples where AI is being in, uh, implemented, great examples of inferencing on the edge. AI is being implemented that's intent-based, and that's really going to drive tremendous opportunity. Of course, these kind of high-end, next-gen AI capabilities and PCs and smartphones will start getting into the marketplace later this year. 2025 will become the first full year. Over the course of next few years, the next few short years, we would see that AI-enabled devices will be representing, let's say, about a third of uh, smartphones uh, and PC markets, and they take much more content, anywhere from 40% to 100% more content in flagship right. AI-enabled PCs and smartphones 
versus uh, flagship uh, 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 AI and PC yes. devices today. Sanjay, we've got a flagship a, smartphone and PC devices today. We've got a couple more key questions, and um, we're going to keep it tight for you, Sanjay, because we have been thinking about the Chips Act. We've been thinking about Intel getting that money. We've been thinking about you still building out in China and in India. Will you still be committed to putting money into Boise and to New York as well? Are you going to get the money from the government? Well, with respect to the Chips Act and our uh, previously announced plans uh, for leading edge memory manufacturing in Boise and uh, in the Syracuse area. Uh, our application for CHIPS Act is uh, under processing with the CHIPS program office, making good progress there. Of course, we'll make the announcements when that process is completed. Important thing yes. is that CHIPS Act enables us to bring with CHIPS Act grants, sufficient level of CHIPS Act grants, investment tax credits, and local state government support, it helps bridge the cost gap with Asia operations. So it yes. helps us bring leading edge memory manufacturing into semiconductors. And of course, that creates many jobs. It supports economic as well as national security. And memory is pivotal. We just talked about how pivotal memory is to AI applications. So think about it. Today, yeah. only 2% of world's memory Total world's memory production is here in the U.S. Of course, it's all by Micron at our facility in Manassas, Virginia. With chips Send. support, as we expand uh, our leading edge memory manufacturing in Boise and Syracuse, next decade, sometime in next decade, we'll be able to get to 10%, over 10% of world's leading edge memory production here in the U.S. And that's really Sanjay. significantly moving the needle. And Mitron, of course, is committed to that. Sanjay, uh, we're running out of time here. Bloomberg's reported that the U.S. is considering restricting one of your Chinese rivals, CXMT. My understanding is that Micron has been in support of that. Could you just outline Micron's position on the U.S. restricting CXMT? Look, the governments make their own decision, and we are not going to speculate or speak on behalf of any of the government actions. What we can tell you is that, of course, China is an important market for us, just like China is an important market for the entire semiconductor industry. And we are well engaged with the customer ecosystem there in terms of bringing value of our leading edge products in memory and storage, helping them drive their innovation roadmaps.